Hi, in this video, we are going to look at polar coordinates. So basically we have seen the Cartesian coordinates where we draw two perpendicular lines and those become our X axis and Y axis. And we represent each point using a pair, ordered pair of numbers, right? So now we are looking, going to look at a different coordinate system, which is polar coordinates, where the same point is represented by a distance from the pole, which is the origin. This point is known as the pole. The distance is R. And this angle with the positive x-axis can be written as theta. So we can write it as R comma theta, right? So any pair of polar coordinates any pair of polar coordinates basically represents a point in the Cartesian plane. Polar coordinates represents a point in the Cartesian plane. However, however, a point in the Cartesian plane Cartesian plane does not have a unique polar coordinate representation. May have more than one polar coordinate representation. So what do I mean by that? So basically, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between points in the Cartesian plane and the set of possible polar coordinates. So this point if you say this point is r comma pi by 6, which is 30 degree, it is going to be the same point if we say it is r comma 2 pi plus pi by 6, right? So all of these representations, the infinite representations like this, where the angle is 2 and pi plus pi by 6, is basically a full rotation and you get then get back to the same point. So these are all representing the same point. So therefore, the number of polar coordinates possible for a single point in the Cartesian plane is more than one, right? So in order to get it to a one-to-one -one correspondence, we make these restrictions. We say that our R should be greater than zero. And we restrict the angle to be zero is less than equal to theta is less than two pi. Or you can also do it like this, minus pi is less than theta is less than equal to pi. If you do this representation where minus pi is less than theta is less than equal to pi, you are saying that the angles can only be between 0 and 180 degree. And what that means is when you do for the first and second quadrants, the angles will be positive. And for the third and fourth quadrants, the angles will be measured in this way and it will be negative, negative angles, right? Because the angles magnitude has to be between minus pi and pi. So you'll have to change the orientation. So clockwise, you'll have to go for negative angles or for anti-clockwise and first couple of quadrants, you will go for positive angles, right? So this is our basic understanding of polar coordinates. Now, there is obviously a one-to-one -one correspondence between R theta and X and Y. So under the conditions, under the conditions, R is greater than zero and theta goes from minus pi is less than theta is less than equal to pi. Then we have a one-to-one -one correspondence and we can say x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And the other way you can say r square is equal to x square plus y square and tan theta is equal to y by x where x is not equal to zero, right? Now using these polar, polar coordinates, we can basically represent different different curves and get their equations in polar coordinate form. So I will just show you how to get the equations of different curves in polar coordinates. So that is what we are going to focus on right now. So the first thing that we'll start off with are the equations of straight lines. So straight line equation can be written like this, theta is equal to theta naught where R belongs to real numbers. And this is the straight line passing through, passing through the origin, the pole. Pole is also another term for the origin. Origin with polar angle, with polar angle of theta naught. So what does this mean? 
if you have a line like this, where R can be in positive or negative, and this angle is theta naught, any point on this line will basically satisfy the condition R comma theta naught, right? Here, R can change, but theta naught is fixed. So the equation for this line can be written as theta is equal to theta naught. That is what remains fixed. So the locus of all points lying on this line is theta is equal to theta naught, right? So this line passes through the pole or the origin. Another version of the line equation can be written like this. We have R dot cos of theta minus theta naught is equal to A. So now this represents a line that passes through that passes through point a whose coordinates are a comma theta naught and is perpendicular to perpendicular to o a where o is the origin so let's think about why that is true so if you have a xy plane like this let's draw the plan point a a comma theta naught. So we know that this distance is A and this angle is theta naught, right? And we want to represent a line that passes through it and perpendicular to OA. Now this is OA, so I have to draw a line that is perpendicular to OA. So my point P is here. This is R comma theta. And the line has to pass through a and it's perpendicular. So this is my line, right? This is the required line and P is a point on that line such that this distance is R and this big angle is theta, right? So obviously from here, we can say that this angle is equal to theta minus theta naught and this is 90 degree as stated in the problem. Therefore, the condition this is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. In triangle OAP, you can easily see that OP is the hypotenuse. So OP must be equal to, or, I, or rather we can say OP cos of theta minus theta naught should be equal to OA, right? So that is what this equation is actually saying. It is R cos theta minus theta naught is equal to A, right? So this is definitely the locus of r comma theta. We have got an equation in terms of r theta and the remaining constants a and theta naught, right? Basically, the corresponding equation in a Cartesian plane for such a line would be x cos theta naught plus y sine theta naught is equal to a. Because this is the normal form where OA is perpendicular to the required line L and the distance of the perpendicular length of the perpendicular is A and the perpendicular makes an angle theta naught with the x-axis, right? So this form and this form are identical. It is the normal form of a line equation written in polar coordinates. Now, let's look at other curves. So, for example, circles. The standard uh, circle equation will be R is equal to A where A is the radius of the circle and circle center is at the pole is pole or the origin right R is equal to A basically tells us that root over x square plus y square R was root over x square plus y square is equal to A. So therefore, x square plus y square must be equal to A square. So that is a simple circle. Another version of the circle equation that we can derive is R square plus R naught square minus 2 R R naught cos of theta minus theta naught is equal to A square. So this actually represents a circle centered at centered at r naught comma theta naught with radius a with radius a. So 
So how do we get that? So let's think about the diagram here. Uh, we have a point here, R0, comma, theta0. And I want to write the equation of a circle here. This is the circle. The radius of the circle is supposed to be A, right? So let's draw this point here on the circle. This radius is A. This point is B. And let's say the general coordinates of P are R, comma, theta, right? So what I know is that this distance from the origin to the center of the circle is R0. And this angle is theta naught. And this distance from origin to the point is R. And this angle is theta. So OCP in triangle OCP, I can see easily that this angle is theta minus theta naught. And if I apply cosine rule on this triangle, cos theta minus theta naught will be equal to OP square plus OC square minus PC square by two times OP into OC. So this becomes basically what? OP square is R square. OC square is R naught square minus PC square is A square because that is the radius of the circle divided by 2 R R naught is equal to cos of theta minus theta naught. And now we are getting the equation of the circle that we wanted. Minus 2 R R naught cos theta minus theta naught is equal to A square. This becomes the circle equation that we desired, right? So that is the geometrical meaning of the circle equation in polar coordinates. Now let's look at conic sections. So here you have to keep in mind that most of the times you will draw the equation of the conic section while keeping the focus as the pole. So when you are writing the polar coordinate equation of a conic section, you will keep the focus as the pole. Okay. So the first, the general equation is this, R is equal to E times P by 1 minus E cos theta. Here, this represents a conic with eccentricity E, eccentricity E. And P is the distance. of a focus to its corresponding directrix, corresponding directrix. Okay. And what are we doing here? So suppose it's a parabola like this, right? Focus is here. We'll take this as the pole and a point on the parabola is here. This is R comma theta. So we are saying, this angle is theta and this angle, this distance is R. And the equation of the locus is this, where P is what? P is the distance between the focus and the directrix. So this distance for a standard parabola y square is equal to 2a, 4ax, this distance is basically 2a. So the equation of this parabola in polar coordinates will be R is equal to e times 2a by 1 minus e cos theta. And we know the eccentricity of the parabola is 1. So it will be 2a by 1 minus cos theta. R is equal to 2a by 1 minus cos theta. Now you can square it and you can try and figure out how this equation becomes similar to this. Remember that this equation is written with origin here, right? Origin was here for Cartesian coordinates. Origin is at the vertex for the standard equation, right? So we have to shift our origin. So when we convert this equation back to Cartesian coordinates, it will look like something like this, 4a x minus a, right? So you can check that. You can square this here. You will get r square is equal to 4a square by 1 minus cos theta whole square, right? And try to simplify this cos theta and all. So we know here that the focal distance of this point would be Basically, focal distance is a plus x, but the x was measured from this origin. So, this distance r would be equal to a plus 
x minus a. So simply x. So actually it can be shown, but I will leave that to you. This is the general equation of a conic. In case of a parabola, E is equal to 1. And pole, basically the origin is at the focus of the parabola. What are the other special cases? E is greater than 1. Then pole is the right focus of the hyperbola. Right focus, pole or origin is the right focus of the hyperbola. And if E is less than 1 in that equation, pole is the is the left focus of the ellipse. Left focus of the ellipse. And the general equation is basically written as R is equal to E P by 1 minus E cos theta. This is the general equation for all the three cases. E is equal to 1, parabola, and pole is the focus. Right. And if you say that in the hyperbola case, if you say that R is belonging to real numbers, then R can be positive or negative. Then you will get the whole hyperbola. But if you say R belongs to only real positive, then you will get only the right branch of the hyperbola. Right. So you can try and convert this into different, different forms and get the Cartesian standard forms of the conic sections using these polar coordinate forms. However, I will not be discussing that in too much detail. This uh, topic is not super important from the Olympiad perspective, but sometimes very rarely you might have use for it. I'll just show you one question of how you apply polar coordinates and after that, it is up to you to apply the formulas. So we'll say, given two points A and B on an ellipse, the ellipse equation is given by R is equal to 3 by 2 minus cos theta. That satisfy, that satisfy a O is equal to twice of O B, where O is the pole. O is the pole. Find the equation of straight line. Find the equation of straight line A B and the length A B. Okay, so right now we have AO is equal to 2 OB. So we know that A, O, and B are collinear. Are collinear. So think about it like this. O is somewhere in the middle and AO is double of OB, right? So this distance is if A is written as R1, comma theta and B is written as R2, comma theta and O is the origin, then we know that R1 is equal to two, 2 times R2, right? This and this are in that relation. Also, actually, we cannot write it as theta here because this must be R2 comma theta plus pi. Why? Because if this angle is theta, the angle here is theta plus pi, right, for B. So B2 points coordinate is R2 comma theta plus pi A and A's coordinate is R1 comma theta, right? Now, uh, they have said that points A and B lie on this ellipse, right? right? So R1 comma theta and R2 comma theta plus pi satisfy ellipse equation, satisfy ellipse equation, right? So we can say that R1 is equal to 3 by 2 minus cos theta and R2 is equal to 3 by 2 minus cos theta plus pi. So which is 3 by 2 plus cos theta, right? We have these relations and we also know that R1 is equal to twice of R2. 
सो थ्री बाय टू माइनस कॉस्थीटा इज इक्वल टू ट्वाइस ऑफ थ्री बाय टू प्लस कॉस्थीटा तो थ्री गेट्स कैंसल एंड यू हैव टू प्लस कॉस्थीटा इज इक्वल टू फोर माइनस टू कॉस्थीटा फ्रॉम वेर यू गेट थ्री कॉस्थीटा इज इक्वल टू टू और कॉस्थीटा इज इक्वल टू टू बाई थ्री राइट सो वी आर गेटिंग कॉस्थीटा इज इक्वल टू टू बाई थ्री सो द डिजायर्ड इक्वेशन desired equation of line ab ab line since the ab line passes through the origin the equation can be written as theta is equal to theta not but the theta not here is r cos or cos inverse 2 by 3 and it can be plus or minus also because we got cos theta is equal to 2 by 3 also the length of ab is basically the length of oa plus the length of ob right Which is equal to R one plus R two, right? In terms of the magnitudes, right? So, how do we get R one and R two? We know that cos theta is equal to two by three. So, rho is equal to three by two minus cos theta was the ellipse equation. If I put cos theta is equal to Two by three here, we will get basically rho is equal to three by two minus two by three, which is equal to uh six by three four by three. So three by four by three. So this is coming as nine by eight, right? So we are getting nine by eight as one point. So that will be our point. Let's say A. So B so this is your R one right rho instead of rho I should write R one and R two would be twice of nine by eight we know that R one and R two are related by that condition R one is equal to twice of R two so we get basically nine by eight plus nine by four as the total length which is twenty seven by eight twenty seven by eight comes as the total length of the segment AB right. So how do we get the points? We know that R cos plus minus two by three is the situation, and we are getting from by putting this cos inverse two by three in the ellipse equation, we are getting the R one value. And R one and R two are connected with each other, therefore we know the whole length of the line segment, right? So. that was one simple example of uh, using polar coordinates in problems you will not get too many situations like this in your uh, olympiad maths but you better know it for the rainy day when you come come across this right uh, in the next video what we will be discussing is applying coordinate geometry methods in plane geometry questions so that is an important topic because sometimes you have to do a brute force sort of solution for Difficult geometry problems and Cartesian geometry sometimes can come in handy, especially if you know how to choose the proper x and y axis and the proper origin. So we'll look at some problems where we cleverly choose our coordinate system and our origin and apply that to solve Olympiad problems. So that will be the topic for the next class, and that's it for now.